Hey guys, hi Caesar. Hey Larry. Hello. Larry, um, why are you dressed so warmly? <laughs> it's 80 degrees outside. I know, I was cold. You were cold. Yes, very. Cold at 80 degrees. Very. Well, you know, maybe we should make a craft. Maybe some activity would warm you up a bit. What do you think, Caesar? Should we make a craft? We can make a craft to go with the story you read. Did you like our story? I did too. It was a good story. I like the story. You like story too? Excellent. Well, let's do a craft. Actually, I have two crafts. It's a BOGO craft. Buy one, get one, although you're not technically buying it. But still, how about it's a MOGO? Make one, get one? I don't know. Well, make two, get two. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself, Larry. Sorry. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's make some crafts here. And that might warm you up a little bit. Okay, buddy? Okay. All right, so the first craft I want to make today is called a paper plate puppy. And if you come down to the Herm Memorial Library in Mifflinburg, we have this as a craft kit bag that you can take home with everything you need inside of it. But if you can't make it down to the library, you'll have to supply the craft supplies yourself. And for that, you will need a paper plate, which we have here on our table. And you're going to need some construction paper U shapes. These will be the ears. And then you're going to need a couple strips of brown construction paper for the eyebrows. These are about an inch long by about a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch wide. You're going to need two googly eyes. You got googly eyes? Ah! Should we look? Ah! And we have a black circle for the nose for our puppy dog. You're also going to need brown paint and some glue and a paint brush. So let's go ahead and get started on our paper plate puppy. And the first step that you need to do is to paint your plate in a corner of it brown. You like to paint, Caesar? <laughs> I know you like to paint. You you tried to be Bob Ross one day, remember? I'll tell you what. I'll oh, I remember one. that. That was funny. That was a fun day, wasn't He's it? His weight fell off. I know. That was great. If I recall correctly, you tried wearing it too, but it didn't fit. Details. So the first thing we're going to do is paint just a section of the paper plate. You want just to do um, like around the top and the side here and you want to do like an oval shape. You're making spots on your dog. If you want to have a very spotted dog you could paint more than one spot on your plate. If you want to make your dog a different color than white you could certainly do that too. You can paint the whole plate one color and then give it darker spots. Or you could leave spots of white showing. You could do that too. If you buy a glossy paper plate like this one, you are going to need to do several coats of paint because otherwise you have streaks in your brown paint and it takes a couple coats to get rid of that. If you buy just a regular cheap paper plate, one coat of paint is enough. Now, if you don't have paint, that's okay too. You can also use a crayon. Um, you know, use, you, if you really want to, just cut off a piece of brown construction paper and make spots. You can do that too, however you want to do. But once you've painted it, you need to let it dry. And we've already done that before. And here it is. So here's our paper plate with our dried circle. And then the next thing we're going to do then is we're going to take our ears. These are those brown oval construction paper ears. See, Larry, you don't have ears. You're removed by paint bottles. Do I do ears? too have ears. Oh, I guess you do. They're hidden under your nice warm hat. And sunglasses. You have nice ears, Caesar. Because that's why you hear me when I call, right? I hear you. Yeah, okay. All right, so take your ears, and you want to fold just about a half an inch up from the bottom. So you get like a little ledge on your ear, like so. And then you also want to kind of fold the top of the ear down a little bit. You want to just give it a little crimp so that it kind of looks like that. And you want to do the same thing with your other ear. You want to fold up half an inch like that. Make a little ledge there. And then fold the top down on that one too a little bit. And so then the next step is to place glue along the inside here of each of your ears. So you're going to need your all-purpose glue, your school glue, whatever you have, your liquid glue. You can use a glue stick for this, um, but I think regular glue works a little bit better. It adheres, adheres better to the plate. And so you want to put your glue on there. And you want to stick this just underneath the edge of the plate at the top. Are your ears glued on, Caesar? No. Oops. 
And since they might fall off, turn your plate upside down a little bit and kind of press hard. Make sure it's good and sticking. Okay, and then you can flip your plate back over like so. And like so. And those are your puppy dog ears. Now we're going to add the nose for our puppy dog. And again, you wanna just put some glue in the middle of your black spot, cause that's the nose. And put that in the middle of your plate. Just like that. He's got a black nose just like you. Do you even have a nose? Well, you got where it should go. Then That's gonna, a nose. It's a nose. And then we're gonna put our eyes on right above the nose, just like so. Now in our um, practice craft and in the craft that we provide, we provided you with super big eyes because those are really cute. But when I came home from the library to make this craft, I forgot to bring the super big eyes. So I brought um, little regular eyes that I have in my craft bin at home. And as you can see, those work just as good. So if you don't have the super big giant eyes in your craft supply closet, don't despair. Regular eyes work just as well. He's still cute. And then you're going to glue the eyebrows on just above the eyes like so. It gives him a nice little personality. And last but not least, we're going to add his muzzle. And this is just a straight line down from his nose. And then you want to draw like an umbrella or a J shape up on both sides, like that. And then you can add some dots around his nose. And if you feel so inclined, you can even add whiskers, like so. And that is your puppy dog, just like the dog in our book. I wish I had a dog. We have Millie. All right. <laughs> but that's okay. I don't know if Millie would like to make a paper plate puppy dog. So that's our paper plate puppy. The other craft I thought we could do, are you warm yet? No. Oh, okay, we'll have to try again then. The other craft I thought we could make is a fun little bear craft. This is what we call mixed media art. Do you know why we call it mixed media art, Larry? Any guesses? Uh, right, Caesar, do you know? Why do we call it mixed media art? It's called mixed media because we use all kinds of different things to make our art. If you look, Caesar, we've got cotton balls for the clouds, and we've got construction paper for the grass, and the bear is actually made of painted paper. So we use all kinds of media, all types of forms to make it art. And so that's what we're going to do with our bear day. This craft is a little bit more challenging for younger kids. So if you've got preschoolers, they're either going to need a lot of help to make this craft or maybe we should just stick with the paper plate puppy dog. But your older kids, this is a perfect craft for them to do on a day when they're bored or it's rainy out or maybe they've got their homework all done. This too is available at the Herb Memorial Library in a craft bag. It will come with a sheet of blue construction paper for your background. It will come with um, a sheet of white construction paper because this is what you're going to need to make your bear. It will come with a strip of green construction paper. And if you are coming into the library and you want to make this on your own, you'll need to get regular green construction paper and just cut about an inch strip along the long side of the paper so that you have about an inch here. Your kit will also come with two cotton balls and two googly eyes. And last but not least, a template of bear parts to make the bear's body with. I know you're fascinated by that, aren't you, Caesar? So if you aren't coming to the library, this too is available online. If you go to um, the website is mylittleme.com, mylittleme.com. And they have the, um, the template for the bear parts there. You can also just draw your own and make your own template if you prefer. So the first step to go ahead and make this is to actually make the bear. And this is the most complicated part. Um, your preschoolers will love doing this. There's two ways to do it. You can take your crayons. You want to get brown crayons and black crayons um, and tan crayons and maybe some white crayons. And you want to um, tape them to the top of your paper here. And then with a blow dryer, you want to melt them so that all the melted colored wax drips down the paper. 
Now we did a melted crayon craft months ago here um, and I didn't really want to do that again so I thought we could try an easier way because not everybody wants to melt their Crayola box and we can do it with paint and this is just as fun and what you want to do is you want to take your paint and you want to drop it in driblets all over your paper like so and I recommend you use brown and a little bit of yellow it's yellow out here we're getting low on yellow so it's getting harder whoops that was a lot and I will take that paper thank you very much Mr. Caesar and you want to take some white here because that will help give us some spots and you want to kind of mix it over the paper because we're going to end up mixing all this together and then a little bit of black paint also so we can get some contrasting colors and we want to spring this now for your preschoolers maybe they would really like to use their fingers to mix all this paint together and that is a lot of fun um, I recommend that if you do that though, you go ahead and wash your hands immediately because this will make a big mess. Make sure you've also prepped your surface before you do this because you want to paint clear to the edges of the paper. I'm going to use a paintbrush for this and we are just going to stir all this lovely paint together and mix it around the edges of our paper. I'm actually going to move my blue paper out from underneath all this because I don't want to stain that. And we're going to mix it and you can see we get these lovely color combination designs and you just want to spread it to the edges. You don't want to mix them too much because then you lose some of that lovely color. And you want to make these colors fun because each bear is going to be unique based on how much paint you've put on and um, where you've put it at. And you want to come around to the edges here and come over here. And then when it looks kind of like you think a bare fur color should look, get some of that yellow out. We don't need quite so much, otherwise you'll think your bear is sick. We don't want to make you sick, do we, Larry or Caesar? No, we don't. When you get it the color that you want, then you need to let it dry. And this is probably the hardest part is letting it dry. Um, and, and just let it dry. Sometimes you need to let it dry overnight. If you're in an absolute hurry, you can take another sheet of paper and plop it on top and then peel them back. And when you peel them back, you'll have two sheets of colored paper that will dry faster because the paint on here is fairly thick. So we're going to ahead and go ahead and move this. And we're gonna let that dry. Now I have a prepared one here that I did earlier. And this is one where we laid a sheet of paper on top of it and peeled it off. And you can see that lovely spread marks from where the paint separated. And it came in really um, to make nice colors and films. We use a little bit too much dark, um, darker paint on this one. So when we make this bear, he will come out a little bit darker than the one our sample one does. So then the next thing you need to do is to cut out your template. You want to cut out all the pieces um, because what we're going to do is we're going to lay them on top of your paper. Now you could just do it just like this and then take the chance that whatever comes out is where it's at. But if you want to be more specific in your design, like if you want this to be on your head, you'd want to place the headpiece on there. And I have actually already cut out my pieces. And so I cut out my template pieces and all we'd want to do then is put him on here. Now you can put a piece of tape behind him if you want. Or you can take a marker and trace them and let your child go ahead and cut these out. Make sure you're using safety scissors so the kids don't cut themselves or their hair or something they shouldn't be cutting. Um, that's not always a great idea. And you want to cut out all these parts. And this is the time consuming part so caregivers might need to be helping kids out with some of this. Um, but this is a good opportunity for kids to learn to follow a pattern and to cut and design. And remember, each bear doesn't have to be perfect and exact because no two bears are alike, are they, Caesar? No, no two bears are alike. And so here is the head that we cut out of that, and that kind of a cool looking head. So we went ahead and I did this project earlier, and the other one I did, this is the color paint that we got on that one. Looks a little bit different from our head here. See, Caesar? So every bear will be different. And we went ahead and we cut out all of the pieces out of this other piece of paper that we had before we started our video. So we'll put this aside also. And now we can keep moving on with our, um, our project. 
The next step you want to do in this project is we're going to go ahead and make the grass. So you want to take your green strip of construction paper and we're going to fringe it. So I folded it in half and you just want to start cutting halfway down the paper in straight lines because we're going to make it grass. And you can cut it all the way down and then when you get to the fold here, when you get that far, you want to open it up and then just cut in between the fold lines. And when you're all done, you'll have this lovely fringed piece of green construction paper. And then you want to lay it flat and you want to kind of pull the, the cut pieces towards you. It's okay if you bend a few, grass is bent. It doesn't all sit nice and flat and you want to just give it some, some 3D distance and some appearance to it. So that it looks like this. See how it's all kind of bent up. And then on your blue sheet of paper here, now you have all your pieces, we're going to take our glue again and we're going to glue the back side of the grass onto our paper. Just like this. Because we have to have our bear sit in something, right? As opposed to on the couch watching TV. Because you never sit on the couch watch TV. Playing video oh. games. Do you play video games, Larry? I'm really good at them, right? I, I've heard that. Okay, so now we're going to take our bare pieces. And I recommend that you assemble your bare before you start gluing. Just to make sure, one, that you have all your pieces. And two, that you know where you want it to go. So we have the head. We have the body. We have the left arm. We have the right arm. And we have the nose. Right there. And we have the paws, the bottom paws. So now that I kind of know where they go here, like this is how it's going to go. So then the next thing that I recommend that we do, I mean, I could even put the, the head on it that we just cut out if we wanted to. That would look kind of cute. Um, the next thing I want you to do then is to take your muzzle and we're going to outline it. If you look at our sample, we outlined it so it would pop out. So we're going to come over here and with your black marker, you just want to trace along the outside edge of the muzzle so that it has a black line to help it stand out amongst the other painted sides. It doesn't have to be a big thick line, but we want to have it visible. And then just like with our puppy, just like that, and just like with our puppy then, we're going to do an upside down triangle in the middle because this is his nose. And you want to color it in and then a straight line down to the bottom that kind of curves out a little bit like a Y. And there we have a muzzle for our bear. And we can glue that onto our bear's head. So we'll take a little bit of glue. I think I used a glue stick on these. So we can take a glue stick and like so. And there's the bear's nose. I promise it didn't hurt. And then we can put the eyes on him also, like so. One eye here, and one eye here. Now we need to give him some ears so that he can hear also, right Caesar? And again, in our collection of templates, we cut out a right ear and a left ear piece. Now you can go ahead and cut them out of the paper also if you like. But I kind of like the idea of them just all being dark black, like what we have in my sample. So on my bear's head, I just took the right ear and I put it in the middle of where the ear space is. And I traced around it like this. Like that. And then we did the same thing for the left ear, where we traced it around like this. And like so. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. And again, if you want to leave it just like that, you can. Or if you want to color them in to give him some depth so he looks like he can actually hear really well. You can hear all the berries growing in the forest and the fish swimming in the river and anybody eating a sandwich. So I've been told. Can you hear somebody eating a sandwich, Caesar? 
Yes, you can. Larry, what's your favorite sandwich? Um. Uh, you don't know. <laughs> uh, a BLT. Oh, I like a BLT too. Broccoli. Um. Broccoli. Broccoli. Uh, I forget the rest. Uh, so, something with tortilla. Yeah, broccoli lime tortilla. Broccoli limes and tortillas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. BLT. You are an unusual skeleton, Larry. So again, with our paws here, see where you got the left paw pad and the right paw pad? We are just going to draw them and trace them again, just like we did on the ears. Again, you can cut these out if you wish. You can also cut them out of black paper or pink paper or whatever color you've made your bear to contrast. If you make a pink bear and you want to make purple pads, you may be as creative as you wish. You just want to circle these around like so. And again, you're going to quickly color those in also. This is good practice for coloring within the lines. This is a skill that sometimes I still need some help on. So if you go outside the lines, that's okay. Just do your best. And we'll come around. And then you're going to want to put paw pads on here too. You can free draw these. They're just going to be giant circles above the bottom pad. You're going to want to do three on each foot. Just like so. And one more. And caregivers, I would recommend that you give your kids a black washable marker instead of a Sharpie marker. But if they do use a Sharpie marker, don't fear if it gets on your table because plain toothpaste will get it out. I tell you that from personal experience. I have a child who really liked to draw with Sharpie markers when she was two. And she colored my table, my chairs, my refrigerator, and even the fireplace mantle. I guess I wasn't paying a lot of attention that day. And we used just plain toothpaste. Don't get the kind of the whitening agents in it, just plain old toothpaste. And we put it on and then we buffed it off with a nice dry cloth and it came right out. So there's your helpful hint for the day. And then we're gonna put three circles here too. Whereas washable markers, those come out with soap and water pretty quick and saves everybody a lot of grief. So I recommend washable markers for younger children. Okay, and there's our pad pause. That probably is the longest part of this craft, is doing all that. And now we can assemble our bear. So the first thing I glued down was the body. So we're gonna glue his body down right here in the middle. And then we glued his paws next to it so they were just resting under the grass. One like so. And one like so. He looks kind of funny without arms, doesn't he, Caesar? You kind of worried about him? He'll be okay. Just give us a minute. Here's his other arm. And we'll just tuck that one in just under his body here like so. And put on angle. And this one too. And last but not least, we're going to put his head on him. Does he need a head? Yes, he does. We'll put his head on him. His head will go on just like so. So now you have a bear sitting in the grass. And for our last thing to the craft here, we're going to give him some clouds in the sky. You want to take your cotton ball and you want to just very carefully and gently pull it apart. If you've got some glue on your fingers, you might have some cotton come off and that's okay. And every cotton ball will separate just a little bit differently. But we want to give it the idea of a buoyant cloud. So you want to put glue on it. And then we want to put it in our sky. Can I have my cotton ball back, please? Please don't eat it. Caesar, Caesar! Nobody wants a soggy cotton ball. Thank you. And then we're going to stretch this one apart and we'll make this into our cloud also. And that is how you make a mixed media art. So like I said, this one is a little bit more complicated than the puppy dog paper plate, but it turns out really cute and it is worth the effort and the extra time and energy that you did putting into it. Don't you agree, Caesar? What do you think, Larry? Um, I'm still cold. You're still cold. You're still cold? Really? I'm dying over here. I'm so hot now, I'm thinking about going for a swim. Oh, maybe you should go on a vacation. Um, I think, though, that we need to come up with next week's craft. So we'll spend some time thinking about that. Do you have any ideas? What? Excuse me. What?
What? Um. What? Uh. What, we lady? have something to tell you. What? We are going on vacation. You're what? You're going on vacation? Um. Yes. See. Um. Passports. Yes. Passports. Where Where are you going? Because if you need a passport, you're not a winter hat. Yeah. See, we're going to Jamaica. See, I heard it's very cold up there, so we're breaking pocket warmers. Right, Caesar? Okay, Larry and Caesar, Jamaica is south of us. It's by the equator. It's hot down there. It's even hotter there than it is here. Oh. It's not cold. Oh. Are you are, so? If you want to go somewhere cold, you should go like to the North Pole. <gasps> oh yeah, then we can go see the penguins. Yay, we love penguins. <laughs> Penguins? Larry, there are no penguins in the North Pole. Penguins live in the South Pole. Uh, but there are polar bears. You can visit your cousin, Caesar. What do you think about that? Um. But if you're going to go, Larry, I seriously recommend that we get you a lot more clothes because it is very cold in the North Pole. And while Caesar has fur, you do not. Well, I have pocket warmers. I'll be fine. <laughs> okay. Well, I hope you guys enjoy your vacation. You'll be gone for... A week? Um, two, two weeks. Two, two yeah, weeks. Two. Okay, so you're gone for two weeks. Okay, well, you know what? I'm happy for you guys. You have a great time. Enjoy your time in the ice or the sun, wherever you end up going. And we will see you back here in two weeks for more stories with Miss Corey, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. All right, well, send me some postcards. I'll miss you guys. I'll send you with one of the penguins. That'd be awesome. Tell the penguins I said hi. All right, we'll see you guys. Bye, everybody.